All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned away every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let, let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and the great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication. Because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. How shall I repay the Lord? For all the good things he has done for me. I will lift up the cup of salvation. And call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. In the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord. Is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. In the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house. In the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in portion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. 
your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Surely it is God who saves me. I will, I will trust, trust in him and, him and not be afraid. For, for the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this, this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, bring out your joy. For the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from 1 Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord and ruler of the host of heaven, God of Abraham, Abraham Isaac, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all of their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent. And in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises. And yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world 
and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and had returned to the table. He said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, Servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, Where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come, come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation, by the forgiveness of their sins, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Commandments, commandments. This is uh, what is mandated. What is, in effect, ordered, directed. What comes to us directly from God? Just like in the Old Testament, we have the Ten Commandments. Well, we have Monday, Thursday. Monday is like Mandare. It's like the Thursday of commandments. So 
Jesus commands us. And our liturgy draws that out. And I mean, he's not someone who just went around, you know, giving directions all the time. I believe most of his effective work was done in his example, in his life, in his resurrection, in his teaching, but it's, it's not always just going around commanding. But he does give us some commandments. He does give us some. So the very fact that he's not just popping off commandments left and right all the time, to me, underscores how important it is that we listen, that we pay attention to what he does command us to do. And in our service tonight, we are really pointed to three commandments. So in a sense, uh, uh, Maundy Thursday, the Thursday of commandments. So certainly, um, at the service itself, at our service tonight, we are made mindful of, first of all, his commandment relative to what we understand as the celebration of the Eucharist, the, the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion, the Mass. And you can see a variety of Christian traditions who do their best to be faithful to that commandment of our Lord. And it's done in different ways. I have a strong preference for our own, but I also have to say we don't have the market cornered on our Lord, that he's beyond us, he's beyond all of us. But he commands us. Uh, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread and he took wine and said to his disciples, do this, do this in remembrance of me. Do this for the remembrance of me and until the Lord come. Do this. This is my body. This is my blood. So that when we do this, we aren't simply uh, sharing a meal. There's nothing wrong with sharing a meal. It's a wonderful thing. And in a sense, one of the great sacraments of our church is situated in the context of a meal. Literally, it nourishes us physically and spiritually. It allows us to share his life, our Lord's life. This is my body. This is my blood. Do this. Share this for the remembrance of me. And so we do. And so Christians around the world do constantly, especially on Sunday and at other times, to share the body and blood of our Lord. Do this. And in that, he is sharing his life. He is making it possible for us to know him really present in our lives, in our community, in our world. Our Lord's love and life and salvation and redemption and forgiveness and empowering really present in us. Do this. Do this. But it's also, it's a sacrament that's meant to be shared. It's a sacrament that's meant to be lived out so that we together may share the cup, we may share the bread, we may share the fellowship of the table, we may share our lives together with our loved ones, with our friends, with strangers who come to us, we may share with one another the body and blood of our Lord. Do this. So in a similar way, yet another command that we have and we engage tonight is that he commands the washing of feet. And so on the night of his betrayal, very many important things happening in that gathering. We could say the institution of the Eucharist, but also the washing of feet. And it's an incredible gesture. I mean, our Lord, our Savior, the second person of the Trinity incarnate in the world and he's washing the feet of his disciples. I mean, washing of feet, I mean, this is a very humble task, would normally be done by a house servant if guests came in and their feet are dirty from walking on the roads, and so the servant would wash the feet. But as I said before, Jesus, his incarnation, his coming into the world, turns everything upside down, turns the traditional power structure upside down, turns the conventional arrangements of things, society, upside down. He's, he's, he's a radical in that sense. He turns everything upside down. So we see the Son of God washing the feet of the disciples, but he doesn't just 
do it to them, he invites them to wash each other's feet. In other words, to participate in humility and service. The washing of feet, he says, isn't just for, for cleanliness. I mean, if you bathe, you don't need to wash again except the feet. And so Peter and Peter are always enthusiastic. Right? Oh, wash me all over. Yeah, you don't need to wash all over. We're going to wash the feet. But washing the feet is a sign of humility, as a sign of selflessness, of service, of offering. So the Lord who shares his own very body and blood, that we may be nourished, upheld, enlightened, fulfilled, is the same Lord who washes the feet of the disciples in great humility. But we're not just the recipients of that humility, as with his life in the Eucharist, we're bidden to share it so that we may treat others with humility. Uh, what does that mean? It means we don't look down on anybody. We're not superior to anybody. We're not above anyone. No task is really beneath our dignity. It's like we're not going to say it's not in the job description. Well, that doesn't go in this kind of context. That we approach our lives, our service, our relationships with humility. Never condescending, never arrogant, never uh, too busy to listen, never too important to care, never above others, certainly not others who seem different from us. There's a place for others with us, a place at the table, a place in our communion, our common union, and as we participate in common prayer that we can all say together, we may also, with humility, invite others into our common prayer, our common life. And so we are bidden to participate in the washing of feet, which we will do as soon as this homily is ended. But there's one other major, very major commandment that we hear in the words of our Lord tonight, and that is the commandment to love. And in a sense, the sharing of communion and the humility and service of the washing of feet all resolve and find their fulfillment in that commandment. Love one another, Jesus says, over and over and over again in the gospel story we hear tonight. Love one another as I have loved you. Share that love. It's a love that brings life. It's a love that brings communion. It's a love that invites others in. It's a love that shows humility and service. Love one another, Jesus says, as I have loved you. And so that's how we fulfill our mission. That's how we live out our life of service. That's how we follow the way of the cross. It's not just, you know, sacrifice for sacrifice sake. It's not just piety for piety's sake so we feel good about ourselves or have right understandings. Nothing wrong with right understandings or self-esteem, but it's ultimately love. God loves us so much that God gives, shares, sends his own son for us. And so likewise, God gives us reminders of love in the world, reminders of love around us, and calls us, us, to be reminders of that love for others. Love as I have loved you, Jesus says. And so tonight, we hear many commandments from our Lord the commandment of sharing the body and blood, sharing his life at table and in other ways with others, the commandment of humility and service, the commandment of love on this Monday Thursday. So we'll now have the washing of feet.
our service continues uh, with the liturgy around the washing of feet. The Lord Jesus, after he had supped with his disciples and had washed their feet, said to them, Do you know what I, your Lord and Master, have done to you? I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. Peace is my last gift to you. My own peace I need now leave with you. Peace which the world cannot give, I give to you. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Peace, peace is my last gift to you. My own peace I now leave with you. Peace which the world cannot give, I give to you. By this shall the world know that you are my disciples, that you have love for one another. Our service continues with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God and Father of all, whom the whole heavens adore, let the whole earth also worship you. All nations obey you, all tongues confess and bless you, and men and women everywhere love you and serve you in peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Lord God, whose blessed Son, our Savior, gave his body to be whipped and his face to be spit upon, give us grace to accept joyfully the sufferings of the present time, confident of the glory that shall be revealed through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Amen. Let's say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father, Father of all, all mercies, mercies, we, your unworthy servants, servants give, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. O oh God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restore the dignity of human nature, grant we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now, and remain with you always. Amen.